Nancy Strickland and this video will show you a simple demo of using the Windows API code pack with DirectX for managed code graphics rendering in Windows 7. This is a series on managed code with Windows 7 and .NET 4.0 so this demo won't use C++ directly instead we'll be using the managed wrappers that the Windows API code pack provides for C Sharp and Visual Basic developers to use DirectX. I'll show you the C Sharp code and I'll upload both the C Sharp and VB code to my blog so you can get it there. I'll give you the URL at the end of the video. Now here's the code we'll be looking at. It's an example of DirectX 2D and DirectX 3D interoperating so let me first just run it to show you what it does. You can see that it's the standard sci-fi text scrolling, which appears to move back in three dimensions into infinite space. I'll stop it now. Now this video has a firm seven minute limit, so I won't go into all the details of writing this demo. Instead, I'm going to show you the key points and how easy it is to modify it to do what you want it to do, because it's managed code, not C++. First of all, notice that over here there are three projects, Controls, Direct3D Utilities, and DirectX. Controls and Direct3D Utilities are from the samples that are part of the API code pack download, and DirectX is from the code pack itself. You can download the API code pack from MSDN and you'll get all of these. And then in the application itself, over here in Sci-Fi Text Demo, you can see that references to all three of those have been added. Now at the top here, I have all the usings that I need out of that API code pack and DirectX. And then moving down here inside the window, we'll set up first a string, which is the text that's going to print out uh, in the Sci-Fi form. And then down here you have two factories, one to create 2D objects and one to create a direct write object. And then this whole next section here, actually I get these next couple of sections here, just declare the objects that we'll need to render our graphics. These that are listed as device independent resources are from the API code pack. The first is a formatter for text for layout and the next three are 4x4 four four matrices for floats. And you can see here the back color being set to black and you can see the timer being set up for our scrolling. Then we have an input element description and that describes each element contained by a single vertex in a vertex buffer including size, type, location, and purpose. A vertex is a point in space. It has attributes like the X, Y, and Z coordinates and color and texture, etc. And an array of vertices is used to describe a surface. So in this case, each element is going to have a position and a text chord. And if I move over here and I open the D3D structs file, I can see that there is a class here named vertex data which holds another class of vertices which is an array with four vertices defined in it uh, each with a position and a text property and you'll see that the position part is a 3D vector with three floats and the other is a 2D vector two-dimension vector with only two coordinates also floats and those define the area in which the text will scroll so to show you how you can manipulate this, I'm going to change this third coordinate, which is the depth coordinate for the uh, top of the scroll area, the top of the surface through which this will scroll, from 16 to 36 in both of these. And now I'm going to save it and run it again so you can see how that changes it. See the difference? Okay, now back to the Windows form. I think I'll go ahead and change it back and we'll go back to our Windows form. The last thing we see down here is the declaration of a vertex data and that's the class that we just saw in the other code file. And now we can go down into the constructor here. Let me expand it. This host variable here is an instance of the direct host class which is defined over here in this controls project. That's why we added it. It's a C++ class that manages the graphics window for us. When the host is loaded, 
This new routed event handler is what's going to be called. Let's look at it. So here's our event handler host loaded. First you can see that it creates the device independent resources, those that we saw declared up higher. Let's go quickly and look at that method. You can see that we use a factory method to get the 2D and the direct write factories. And then we're going to use that direct write factory here to set up our text format. So here's another place that we can obviously do some modification. I'm going to just change that font. And I could also, if I wanted, uh, change the alignments here so that the text wasn't horizontally and vertically centered anymore. Now I'm going to go back to our handler. That's how that works. And show you that the next thing we do is start the time and we call the render method and that render method is a delegate so it'll send us down to render scene now this is all technical graphic things that we don't want to mess with we we've already seen the places where we can make the kind of changes we want to make but we have seen how the windows api code pack makes it possible for you to work with DirectX in managed code, code that you can read and understand and modify more easily than straight C++ native code. Oh, and I forgot to show you uh, the new font. Here it is. And you can see the new look of it. So that was an introduction to what you can do with the API Code Pact and DirectX Graphics in seven minutes.